So let me start with a short introduction on, on the assays, on the HCV RNA assays. I think we have to keep in mind two things. First, these assays have a broad range of HCV RNA viral loads which they detect. They come from down to 5, 10 international units and they go up to 10 million international units. So that is a huge range of um, viral loads which can be assessed with uh, such an assay. And the second thing is all assays are standardized to international units, so they should be comparable, but because of the, that large range of viral loads which they have to assess, there is a considerable var uh, uh, variability between the different assays and there might be differences in the absolute quantification but also in the detection limits of these assays. But in general, yes, the uh, currently available assays are doing very well, are comparable, and are a, a good improvement for the practical use for our patients in response guided therapy. So when it comes then to the practical use of these assays, the most important thing is of course to short the treatment duration down to an optimized duration. It should be no longer which is required to achieve a sustained response, but of course in those which have a low chance to get the virus eradicated with the 24 weeks short treatment duration, it should also be ensured that these patients get a better chance with the longer treatment duration. So if we look back to the dual combination therapy, only approximately 10 to 15 percent of our patients were suitable for the short treatment duration, so a small rate. If we look now for the current treatment, the triple therapies with Perseprovir and Telaprovir, this rate went up to 44 and up to 62 percent of our patients. So the vast majority of the treatment knife and also the relapse patients which are non-serotic can go down to the short treatment duration. That is important and here the question is are these assays reliably and comparable at week four of the triple therapy in detection of viral loads? Why? Because it is required that a negative result is obtained at week four. If you have that undetectable viral load at week four, your patient can go for 24 weeks with an excellent chance to eradicate the virus above 90 percent. But if you have a residual viremia, let's say below 25 international units but still detectable, these patients have a higher relapse rate and these patients should go for a longer duration. So this is the result of the approval study but this result was obtained with one single assay, a roche cobus tegman based assay. The big question is, is this transferable to the real world setting where also other assays are used? And here, unfortunately, we discovered in others that there are huge differences between the different assays. To give an example, the Abbott real-time PCR-based assay, which is also used broadly in the real-world setting, is more sensitive and if you have, for example, a 70% undetectable rate with the Roche assay, this same rate with the Abbott assay comes down to only 30 to 40%. So a significantly lower proportion of patients will then be suitable for the short treatment duration. And of course, here we have to ask the question, what is the optimal cutoff for the Abbott assay to determine which patients can go for the short treatment duration. And so far from retrospective analysis and from comparative studies, we have learned that most likely a cutoff of 12 international units is fine and is good for prediction of good response, high SVR rates and low relapse rates if you use the Abbott assay. So in other words, if you use with your patient a different assay, for example the Abbott assay, the viral load at week 12 can be either undetectable or below 12 but positive, which is a very low residual viremia. And for both of these types of cases and patients, you can shorten down the treatment duration to 24 weeks and still the sustained response rate is above 90%, so there is no higher risk of relapse. It's just a difference because of different sensitivities of these assays. So finally, I would like to give an outlook into the future. We all know that we have currently a broad development with new direct antiviral agents leading to new conventional interferon-based triple therapies, for example, with a nuke or an NS5A inhibitor, but also to interferon-free treatment regimens. 
And this will become available very soon, next year, the year after next year, 2015, these uh, new treatment schedules will be available in the clinical practice. And here, of course, we have the question, will these viral kinetics, the response-guided therapy approach, also be of importance for the use of these new treatment options? And clearly, we have learned from these new treatments that they are highly antiviral active and therefore the viral loads are going down in more or less all patients very quickly during the first one, two weeks of treatment. Which means that the viral loads are undetectable in more than 80-90% of patients at week two or four and therefore obviously measurement at these time points will not be predictive of um, the treatment duration which is required to achieve an SVR. So if we use these assays in the future, I'm sure we have to adapt the time points, very early measurements during the first week, after one week, will be perhaps um, suitable then to uh, try a prediction of virologic response and to try, which, uh, uh, to try to find out which is the optimal treatment duration for these patients. We are speaking about 12 weeks, but also 8 weeks or even 6, 4 weeks might be a possibility here in the future and we have to explore and to learn whether viral kinetics early during ter therapy will help to optimize treatment duration also in the future.